Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we've got this 25-year-old Yamaha Phaser 600. It looks fantastic, but in today's video, we're gonna be finding out, is it worth still buying one? And what's it like to ride compared to today's modern bikes? Before we get out on the road, let's just go over a few things about this bike, which makes it so great because it, it really is. It's a 1998 600cc, but it's carburetor. It's proper back to the analog era. You know, you've got to warm it up. You've got to put the choke on, start it up, let it like splutter around for a while. Even when you get going, it's still hesitating and not really getting there, which is sort of missed these days. You know, you've got these injection bikes, but you get on it and you can just go. It's almost like you don't need to warm it up. Sometimes you can forget and like damage the engine or whatever, but it's really exciting to get involved with this and just warm the thing up and get it going. It feels like you're really part of the experience. So that's one thing I love about the bike. You know, we've got this fantastic 600cc engine here. It's got four individual carburetors. Um, you know, we've got the double overhead cam there, 16 valve on it. It's a great bike because you know, if you've got these carburetors, you've got problems, you can strip them yourself, just slide them out of the bike take them apart, it's a real good learning bike. You can do a lot with this thing and learn a lot about motorbikes from such a basic engine like this. Um, we've got a little system on the back, it's just a slip on pipe. It's a bit noisy, but you know, uh, noisy bikes get uh, seen, as, as the saying goes, you know, if, if, if someone can hear you come in, it's a bit safer. So I quite like that, just pop some earplugs in on the bike. Um, we've got some really good kit on it. You know, the brakes are fantastic. Suspension's not too bad. In fact, we'll move on to the suspension later. I actually really, really like it. It's a fantastic setup. It's really soft. And on today's roads, crazily enough, you've got these modern bikes with hard suspension. This one actually feels more comfy because it just soaks them all up because it's not all that super precise, dialed in handling characteristics. You've got a more laid back, um, relaxing riding style, and it really works with the bike. Um, You've even got an underslung caliper down there. Look at that. It's like MotoGP technology in 1998. Um, even modern bikes. See, the R1's got a over-the-top caliper there. Well, I don't, I don't like that. Look at that. This thing's miles ahead of the rest. Um, no, seriously, moving on to some of the bits of change on this one, particularly I've put the Renthal handlebars on there. We've got some Renthal 971 handlebars with these Renthal grips and bar ends. The reason I did that was because the standard bars are really like Tory sort of city driving, very thin, sat up with your arms like this. And when you're pushing on a little bit on some of the roads, having a bit of fun, it's, um, it's a bit risky. You know, you get a bit of head shake. There is no steering damper on this bike, so you've got to be pretty careful. It's a very settled bike and it's very planted. It doesn't feel like it's going to start giving you the massive tank slappers, but that is in the back of your head when you're pushing on that perhaps that could happen. So it's nice to have that extra leverage and it makes it a bit more comfy. You know, you lean a bit more onto your hands, which is quite nice. It's a bit easier on your back when it's like this with the standard bars, you're set up very straight. Now we're gonna get kitted up, get out on the bike and uh, yeah, I'm gonna speak to you guys about what this bike can really do. Right, so all kitted up. This is the beauty of these bikes with the carburetors turn that on we've got this little fuel assisted pump on there which helps get a bit of fuel into the carbs fill them up choke on oh see oh, i love it yeah, it doesn't even start up you've got to give it a bit of beans and get the thing going chokes on if you turn that off it's just going to stall so we'll leave that on for a minute put the gloves on um i don't really tend to use the race i'm on i'm in my full levers today but I don't tend to use the race bike gloves when I'm on the road because they're super uncomfy. These are nice. They don't offer as much protection, but it's okay. We're not going crazy. We're just out to have a bit of fun. So as you can see, this little beautiful bike, three and a half thousand miles. Revs are coming up now on the, uh, on the choke and it goes down into a steady idle. And uh, away we go. Okay, before we go and uh, get it on some twisty roads and see what the thing's about and try and drag a knee on the floor a little bit, let's have a chat about the bike itself. What have we got here? 600cc, 95 horsepower claimed from Yamaha from new. That was in 1998. Given that this has only done three and a half thousand miles, I wouldn't say it's probably too far off that. I've just given it a full service. It's got the spark plugs done, oil, all the carbs cleaned and balanced. We balanced all the carbs on this. They were really out of sync. Now they're just purring away, so we're happy there. 
So yeah, 95 horsepower, 45 foot-pounds of torque, which is, is okay for a carb carbureted bike. I mean, you have got to wring its neck a little bit to get it going. There's not an awful lot off the line um, in the low RPMs where we're at now, you know. Um, we've got an 18 litre fuel capacity, so we're hopefully getting, it says you get about 190 miles out of that tank at uh, roughly 45 mpg. So I'd be quite impressed if, uh, if we got that, but real world driving, maybe you would cruising along these roads like this. That might be possible. Okay, so onto a nice bit of road here. Let's see what this bike's about. What the suspension can actually do on a nice smooth road and how it, how it weighs up coming to a corner here. Ah, oh, tip right and lovely. Nothing wrong with that. On the power nice and early. Wow, third gear. Down into second. On the brakes all the way in. <laughs> Back down into second again for this one. Rides along lovely, turns in nice, brakes nice, changes direction lovely, nothing wrong with that. Brake hard on the front, brake into the corner there, loads of grip on the front. Puts the power down nice and yeah. I mean I can't see what this bike doesn't do that a modern bike does other than be even more comfortable because it's turning into all these corners lovely braking loads on the front brake so the front end's got loads of grip you know there's no feeling there that the front's waving at all up i'm braking all the way around here one-handed even it's just flipping it's lovely it's a good bike you get that sense of confidence with this bike you know obviously it's a little bit wavy and wallowy but when you're turning into these corners, it's just soaking the bumps up lovely. And these modern day roads, they're such a pain for these bumps. And when you're on one of these modern sports bikes, you can get bumped around a little bit and, you know, it can unsettle you. And that's one of the things that I don't like so much about modern bikes on the road, because the suspension's so dialed in that you end up feeling like you're on a race bike on the road. And, and that just doesn't work out to where you get, you get a lot more sort of head shake coming out of corners because the front's bouncing. Whereas on these older bikes, you just get that real sort of confidence that you can come into a corner and no matter what's through that corner, this bike is just gonna soak it all up. And that's something that I do love about the older bikes and I miss because suspension has got so track focused now, you don't get that so much. You know, like I had a uh, MT-10 a while ago and it was a great bike, but it was so fast, like unbelievably fast. You open that thing up in first gear and you've broken all the speed limits that are uh, available to brake on the road. And then in the corners, you know, it was quite bumpy. You take it on any other road than the one we're on now and it would just bounce you around, kick and buck. However, it did it so well because it had the steering damper and everything. So I'm not slating that bike at all. It's an unbelievable bike. But I'm just saying these older bikes sort of do that in an analog way. You know, this bike's got no steering damper. Look at the play. I mean, it's got, <laughs> I can shake the bars like that and that's just all all twisting in this front suspension and the forks because they're quite small they're not like big like today's standard but you've just got this sort of flexible bike underneath you that you can manipulate around the bends and and and, and it just works and it works so well the worse the roads get this old bike seems to just work well so it is a very very good bike so if you're thinking about buying one got to go out there look if you've got the budget to spend on a brand new you know seven eight thousand pound bike from a showroom then you're not going to be considering one of these but if say you're like me and you've had a few modern bikes and you just sort of think they're not tickling your fancy anymore and maybe you fancy trying out an older bike just to relive that sort of get those sentimental feelings out get a bit of nostalgia going from back in the day you know i was only eight years old when this bike uh, came out so but there'd have been many people that um had this as maybe new from the showroom and they fancy another one but they're still good bikes there's nothing wrong with them they're still as great as they were when they came out of the factory um we're gonna go up this road here because it's got some more fast swooping corners that we can have a bit of a play on <laughs> you 
coming here all the way down. Look at that. <laughs> so good. Dips in nicely here around the corner. And the bike just picks up. All the way to the brakes now into third gear. Tightens up this corner, it's a nice one. Open it up. So yeah, in summary, if you're looking at one of these bikes, it is a great bike to go for. I mean, what's the other bikes in the range of this? Or the Suzuki Bandit, bikes like that. I'd probably always go for this one just because I'm not always that fussed on the looks of bikes being all aggressive. And I really love the, um, the half fairing on the bike. It, it makes such a difference when you're cruising along at like 70 miles an hour, motorway riding. It's, it's a game changer for your neck. It's really comfortable. Um, and you can tuck behind it when you're pushing on, doing things maybe you shouldn't. It's there just to tuck away from and enjoy a little bit. Uh, enjoy the bike a little bit more without getting that neck ache so you can spend more time on the bike. I've always found the MT-10 actually, the new, um, well, the Yamaha's MT-10, that did such a good job of deflecting the wind. It doesn't actually have a half fairing on the front. I was really amazed by that. So yeah, if you look at all of these, sort of 600 bikes of this sort of era 1998 um, then I would definitely definitely suggest getting one with the fairing and maybe not going for a Suzuki Bandit. Okay everybody I think that sums up the video this is a fantastic bike and if you are in the market to get one of these bikes then yes I strongly advise getting one I mean over the Bandit and other bikes that are comparable this I believe has the uh, cutting edge on it you know you've got this the half fared bike here with the wind protection, that is just a no brainer. It's so good on the roads. Suspension, super comfy. And if you can find one of these with lowish miles, you're happy, you like, it's gonna be a good bike. If it's got 25, 30,000 miles, I wouldn't be too worried about it as long as it's had good service history. Check the forks um, and check the rear shock for leaks. Make sure it's had regular service intervals and there's a bit of evidence of that. And if it's over 20,000 miles, I think you should have done the valve um, clearances so check that's been done and this is going to be a solid bike the engine's bulletproof the chassis is great you know you've got it here it's all powder coated here paint it's not going to be rusty and beaten up then go and grab one enjoy it take it out and see what you think if you do get one drop some comments in the box below let me know what you think of it if you like the video please click that button give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more subscribing would be fantastic i'd really appreciate it so that's it for now we'll see you on the next one bye bye